Today's announcement has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with the president's campaign or campaign activity. Uh, the real collusion scandal, as we've said several times before, has everything to do with the Clinton campaign. So a whole lot of information from a whole lot of different angles, from a whole lot of different folks. Now, the White House today trying to deflect blame from Donald Trump and instead placing it squarely with one Hillary Clinton. Yesterday, as the world waited to see which Trump associates would be arrested in the Russia case, President Trump, he turned to Twitter, of course, to try to make his case. The president of the United States tweeting, quote, never seen such Republican anger and unity as I have concerning the lack of investigation on Clinton made fake dossier. Now $12 million, the uranium to Russia deal, the 33,000 plus deleted emails, the Comey fix, and so much more. Instead, they look at phony Trump Russia collusion, which doesn't exist. The Dems using this terrible and bad for our country witch hunt for his words now, evil politics but the r's are now fighting back like never before there's so much guilt by democrats clinton and now the facts are pouring out do something with an exclamation point well the facts are pouring out like mr trump did say but those facts frankly don't lead to some of the same conclusions so what we decided was we're going to bring andrew here to fact just for us and andrew um it, it's interesting you turn a channel from one channel to the next you have the indictments being significant issues of concern for the administration. You turn to another channel, which will remain nameless. Right. And all of a sudden, the only <clears> thing <throat> that we should be focusing on right now is this dossier and the Clintons and a uranium deal. Help me uh, separate fact from fiction. And I don't think the details I'm about to lay out are going to make an appearance on that channel. So people who watch exclusively that channel might not know the information I'm about to share, Rich. The president made four main claims in that tweet storm. None of them hold up to scrutiny. First up, the Clinton-made dossier. That's referring to a what now well-known opposition research report against Trump. It details a long line of Trump-Russia connections from financial links like Russian buyers of above market value property from Trump to Trump's connections called when the Trump-owned Miss Universe pageant was held in Moscow in 2013. The highlight of the dossier, of course, is the so-called P-tape claim that Trump, in a fit of anti-Obama ire, hired prostitutes to come up to the presidential suite at the Moscow Ritz-Carlton, the same suite where Obama had once stayed, and had the hookers urinate on the bed. A move the dossier says, combined with other material, made Moscow believe they had enough damaging material on Trump to blackmail him if they sought to. While that specific allegation has not been confirmed, Britain's The Independent newspaper has been following up on what Christopher Steele, the former MI6 British agent who authored the dossier, uh, wrote and found that many of its claims, including those related to Paul Manafort, have been tr proven true. That contradicts part of tre Trump's tweet on Sunday. As for Trump's claim that Hillary Clinton made the dossier, she did not. Again, it was researched and written by this man, Christopher Steele, a former British spy. What Trump seems to be asking is who paid Steele to do that research. Back in January, before Inauguration Day, CNN reported that then-FBI Director James Comey had briefed the president-elect on the existence and contents of the dossier, noting the memos originated as opposition research, first commissioned by anti-Trump Republicans and later by Democrats. Last week came reports that both the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee had retained a D.C. law firm paying them $9 million. The law firm contracted out with a research company called Fusion GPS, which then hired Steele, though it's th not known how much money the firm gave Steele. Members of the Clinton campaign and the DNC also say they didn't know about the dossier or that the law firm had contracted it. What's more, this weekend the conservative news outlet The Washington Free Beacon announced that it had originally contracted Fusion GPS, though they also stopped short of saying they paid for Steele's work. They also did opposition research on other Republican candidates. And they weren't the only ones interested in the Steele dossier. Steele later turned that dossier over to the FBI, and various reports suggest the FBI considered hiring Steele to continue his work, though that did not happen. Reports also suggest that the Mueller team used the dossier as a source and even interviewed Steele about his findings. And Rich, we hear a lot about con collusion on that other channel, that this is a, an indication, evidence that Clinton was colluding with the Russians. Not true. They, they hired an investigator. The investigator used sources based in Russia. That's a lot different than having contact between the campaign and the Russian government and asking for information. And again, the dossier was not started um, by Team Clinton or whatever else. This was created by a major donor within the Republican Party. Correct. Okay.
Now we get to the other thing, Andrea, I hear about, which is this uranium deal. What's the deal here? This gets a little complicated, Rich, but Trump and congressional Republicans say this deal needs to be investigated. It has been a longtime chestnut for the Sean Hannity, Alex Jones, Breitbart crowd who claim it implicates both Hillary Clinton and Bob Mueller in some sort of international conspiracy. It doesn't. At the heart of the rights ire is the 2010 sale of a Canadian mining company, Uranium One, to Rosatom. That's the nuclear, Ru the Russian nuclear agency, at a time when Uranium One held licenses for 20% of all U.S. uranium extraction. Sounds pretty bad. Add to the mix the name of Frank Geistra, a Canadian mining executive who's given $145 million to the Clinton Foundation over the years, and it sounds like you've got all the ingredients you need for a scandal. But the timeline says otherwise. Geistra owned a mining company called Eurasia, which he sold to Uranium One in 2007. In 2010, Uranium One, now without Geistra, was sold to Rosatom, the Russian company. Now, because of its U.S. uranium holdings, that sale had to be approved by a nine-member government panel representing 16 departments or agencies of the Obama White House, including the State Department. All of them okayed the deal. What's more, whatever uranium is mined by Rosatom is not allowed to leave the U.S. They don't have the license to do that. The mined uranium is only used for nuclear power, not nuclear weapons. And the mines only contain 20% of the U.S.'s potential deposits, not 20% of all American uranium. Are there legitimate questions about the deal? Perhaps. Do they come close to implicating a pay-for-play deal between the Clinton Foundation and the Obama-Clinton State Department? Hard to see how they would, Rich. Other claim is, uh, again from Trump, again via tweet, um, they have even less groundings uh, to me, in fact, that say, hey, listen, it's not just Uranium, it's not just, obviously, this major collusion to try and get their hands in the dossier. You know, it's all things Clinton as if somehow she's in the White House. Well, there were some oldies but goodies that came out in that tweet storm, Rich, including Hillary Clinton's emails. And once again, in that tweet storm, the president banged on those emails. But this is well-traveled territory for the FBI and other investigators. You recall in July 2016, then-FBI Director James Comey cleared Clinton of wrongdoing with her emails, though he did scold her for being careless with them. This conclusion coming after months of investigation. Comey later questioned and again cleared Clinton on the email front in late October 2016. You'll remember that one because a lot of people say that's the press conference that cost Hillary Clinton the election. Which leads to Trump's final claim about a Comey fix. It's hard to know precisely what he was referring to here, but it's likely this. Republican senators now say that Comey had begun preparing his letter that cleared Clinton of wrongdoing on her emails two months before she was interviewed by the FBI on the matter, and they want to investigate. Sounds reasonable, but then again, I began preparing this report for broadcast about seven hours before airtime, and I was willing to change it if any new facts warranted those changes. Not hard to see Comey doing the very same thing during this investigation, Rich. So now, here's the hard part, Andrew. People want to hear what they want to hear. Yeah. Um, but to me, the, the, the stunning thing is that somehow Hillary was in the bag for the Russians and that she wanted to basically subvert, if you follow this logic, her own campaign. Right. Um, if people just think about self-interest right now, it's completely illogical, but... It's not just the president tweeting. He's got supporters on the Hill. Well, I mean, according to all this, Hillary Clinton spent money on that dossier that she never used during the campaign and that they think implicates her as being collu in collusion with Russia so that she would do all of these self-defeating things and actually not use the information. And now it's only coming out and it's a scandal when she's not in power and has no actual role here. This is... Keep in mind that the investigations on Capitol Hill are partisan in nature. They're led by Republican majorities, including Devin Nunez, who's still running the House Intelligence Committee's investigations. They're the ones who have been organizing these investigations in Clinton-related matters, splitting some of the time and the resources of those committees, and really trying to cloud the entire investigation into the Russian matter. And to be short, I'm going to be talking in a little bit to Megan McCain about where the Republican Party is right now, but we're talking about rule of law questions. Mm -hmm. At the heart of this investigation by Bob Mueller, who, by the way, is recognized as a Republican, serving in Republican administrations, et cetera, here, I think he's a fair actor, but let's nobody make him out to see some bleeding heart a liberal patsy in the bag for Hillary Clinton. Right. Yeah, he well, was appointed by a Republican. He served under Republicans. He's a registered Republican. You talked about rule of law. That's what happens in a courtroom. Rule of law has plays no role in impeachment. It's an entirely political process, and we'll see if that political process is moved by what Mueller's come up with. All right, let's see if you change any minds, Andrew, but thank you very <laughs> much. Coming up next, as President Trump's poll numbers slide, and we're talking into bad record territory, Republican rift, it keeps on growing. I spoke with Meghan McCain about all that and more, that conversation straight ahead.